Bonjour. Salut. My name is Benji and today is January 12, 2021. And today I have a story that comes from, and it doesn't come from, but bonjour on the globe. Where does bonjour come from? Bonjour comes from the country of France, right here in Europe. And we'll put, we'll hang, we'll hook up France right here. The story doesn't originate in France. Today's story is an event that happened in France. And the story that I have for you is a story about Christmas. Now, for all of us, Christmas has, has just passed us. Uh, and one of the images that is always with us during Christmas is this scene, the nativity scene. Now, there is another image that comes along because I have students that always ask me, oh, Ben, why do you like Christmas? And you know, I like Christmas for the power Christmas has. What kind of power am I talking about? What is the power of Christmas? Well, this is where the story, well, this is where it gets interesting. I think that you might just be just like me because on Christmas, we all have this one thing that we do think of and I always think of this. I think about the Christmas truce of 1914. And that is why for me, Christmas is special because it was this event that had the power to stop a war. Well, here we know that World War I began in July 1914, and it ended November 1918. Now, five months into World War I, between Germany and England, uh, the, the war, the Germany, had already ran through Belgium. They occupied Belgium. And now they were already going into France, the German war machine going into France. Now, the British had set these lines right here. These are the trench lines. Uh, now, on these trench lines, this between the trench lines, between the German front and the British front and French, this was called no man's land. And in between these no man's land, this was where the, this was trench warfare. Now, this was an ugly kind of form of war. But um, the trenches were about, on average, 250 yards apart. However, in some cases, they were even much, uh, much closer together, like maybe 20 yards, some running right into each other's trenches. Now, the trenches were built, they were built in a zigzag form uh, as to prevent the soldiers, uh, enemy soldiers, moving in for them to prevent them from shooting into a straight line. Now, the other uh, reason for the zigzag was because when you do fire uh, a weapon, the bullets bounce, they ricochet. So to prevent the ricochet, uh, that's why they were built in zigzags, so the, the bullet can just hit the dirt. So we have down here, there's 27 miles uh, length of Yapol, right under Belgium. Now, this little area was where the Christmas truce happened. Ah, so five months into the war, this was the Christmas truth. Now, on December 7th, 1914, Pope Benedict the 15th had asked, the Pope from Rome asked the countries, he asked Germany, he asked England, he asked France, he said, may, may all of you, may all of you, may your guns fall silent at least upon the night the angels sang. Of course, no one listened to the Pope, they just kept fighting. But this is where it gets interesting. Just then, the Germans began singing, Silent Night, Holy Night. And the Germans were the first. They began to put Christmas trees on lights on their trenches. And they all started one by one coming out of the trenches, beckoning, you know, the British to come out also. They said, you no shoot, we no shoot. So they all came out 
And this is one of the images that comes out of the 1914 truce. Now the Germans had the higher advantage during the trench warfare because they were on higher ground right after from coming in from Belgium. Uh, the thing was, was that there is plenty of evidence to support that there was a truce that occurred. They even, these guys even were photographed together like this. They wrote letters from both sides of the war saying that it was an amazing thing what happened. So around the globe, again, they were publishing articles about Germans and British being filmed together, playing football. Um, and it, it must have been one of the most difficult things for these soldiers to be able to, you know, exchange gifts, exchange chocolates, cigarettes, exchange stories. They uh, used this truce uh, at a time also to collect the war dead and to repair their own trenches. So it, there was a good thing, of course, that came out of this. Of course, the high commands of Germany and England, they, they did not approve of this. And of course, they ordered their soldiers to again go into the fighting. It, it must be very uh, difficult. I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to make friends one day. And then the next day you have to go back and shoot the people that you just met. Of course, when you're in this sort of situation, all you want to do is come home. And uh, these soldiers didn't have a choice. They had to fight. You fight, you go home. None of these soldiers even really knew what they were fighting for. They were just there. So again, that's what uh, is always through my mind. And I think, and, I, and I'm very confident that this is what runs through your mind during Christmas time too, about the Christmas truce. The power of Christmas, the meaning of Christmas is, it was, it, 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 it we were able Christmas, the thought of it was able to stop a war at least momentarily. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the true spirit and power of Christmas. And that's why I love Christmas. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story. It's in a historical story. And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. Be blessed. Amen. Bye.